we're doing our genetic memory of honey experiment. A comment mentioned that we might want to retry it. They had different results than us. So this is the real honey. The first one was corn syrup, and this is corn syrup mixed with honey. And so we're gonna add honey water to this last one. And then we're gonna start swirl swirling. Um, this one, if you can't, you can't really see it on the camera. It is just, it is developing swirl lines. And yep, it's definitely getting a hexagonal pattern. Oh good, you can't see it in the video. So there's corn syrup, straight corn syrup. And then this is the mix of honey and corn syrup. One of the concerns that we have about saying that honey has genetic memory to look like honeycomb is that the genetics of honey come from nectar and from the honey crop of the bee. That's the only living genetics that there are. It should not be able to take on the genetic, take on genetics from the honeycomb because that's just where it's stored. It's not um, interacting in a genetic basis. So I'm gonna keep swirling. Oops, there you go. So the adulterated honey, or the corn syrup mixed with honey, has a very similar pattern to the corn syrup. Although, oh, we have cinnamon rolls, so ignore the timer. Um, the the other two are dissolving faster than the honey. So, and the pattern, in my opinion, is more distinct. Um, or easier to see, I wouldn't say more distinct, mostly because I think the color is more and the viscosity is different. The deeper color in the thicker honey shows a better um, pattern. And I would show you them all at the end, but the other two have dissolved. Okay, so yeah, um, I kind of feel like that's a really cool pattern but I don't know that it's much different than, yeah, the other two just dissolved. Than the other two, I feel like it was all very similar. And again, I do not believe that um, honey can take on genetic memory from the container in which it's stored. But that's just our analysis and 